Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to conclude Unit 1 by conducting our model testing for our classification tree that is using a, a, deci a decision tree. So let's go ahead and see if we can explain some of the basic ideas that are happening here. When you are doing a machine learning data science type thing, it is very common for you to split your data into, into three parts. And these three parts are often called you have your train set. You saw this in some of the prior examples, train set. So I know that's ugly, but just work with me. Then you have your, excuse me, that's really bad. You have your train set. Then you also have something called a validation set. And then lastly, you have a test set. Now, in the videos that we've been doing in this class, we've been mostly skipping, sidestepping the validation step. We have kind of been doing that in terms of when we use the carrot package. And basically the validation set is what you use to determine your hyperparameters. The train set is also used for determining your hyperparameters and also for your future selection, depending on the type of algorithm that you're using. And lastly, you have your test set, which is the final piece of, the final data set that you use. And you only want to use it once. So all of your, all of your work is going to be happening between the training and the validation, training and the validation. You're going back and forth between these and then when you're finally satisfied, you move over here to your test set to see how your model will perform in general. And so it could be much more complicated than this, but I just want to give you an overview and we will go into this in deeper detail later on. Now generally when you're dividing your train validation and test set, it kind of depends on what your goals are. But I've, I've seen it very common where you might set aside, again, this is just, it depends on every, every data scientist. 10%, 10% or less for the test set, you know, oh, maybe 70% for the training and maybe 20% for the validation. This is just one example. Again, different people will have different views on this. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to use as much of your data as you can for training, validation just to see how it's doing, and finally for testing. Now there are factors to consider like your sample size, et cetera, whether this is possible, but that's a simple overview. Now, let's go ahead and go over to our studio. So you've seen all this before, or actually this particular information up here in the top left is new, but as you know, we've been working on a model that is trying to classify people by job class, whether they're in the information industry or in the industrial industry. And we were using several different variables for that. And you can see the plot here off to your lower right that kind of gave us the, the results for our model. So you can see, uh, let me get this guy out the way. All right, oh, here we go. You can see down right here, this is the, the results of our model. Uh, this was shown in a prior video, so I'm not going to, to stress this too much, but you can see that we used the variable education twice, and we didn't use any other variables to split our model up. You know, you know in other words, the algorithm determined that the other variables such as age and wage did not matter in terms of dividing things. So having said that, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the other things. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually run the model using the test data. So here's how we're going to do this. You can see here up in the upper left hand corner I have my code. I just set my C for consistency. And then now I'm going to use a function called predict. You can see it right there. The predict function is going to take the model that we developed in the last lesson and we're going to use the new data called testing set. We made this data set way back in lesson 1-2 when we split our data. So I do this, I press enter. Now the results of this are not that interesting. You can see right here it just says information, industrial, information, industrial. These are the predictions that the model is making based on what, it, what the information it has from the new data. So not all that exciting. Now, this is what we're going to do next. We're going to create a table that is going to compare the predictions of the test model, which we just made, with the actual job classes from the testing set. So we do this. Oh, excuse me. And then now we can we set it as a, an object called accuracy. And now we can look at it. So you can see right here, here's an accuracy. Um, 339 times something was industrial and it was predicted as industrial. And then 207 times something was information and it was predicted as information. So that's looking pretty good. 
Our problem here is on the off diagonals. So several times something was information when it was industrial and several times something was industrial when it was information. These are called type one, type two errors for those of you who are more familiar with statistics. Now to get the actual accuracy, we're going to do a little bit of work here. We're going to use the sum function and then inside the sum function, we're going to use the diag function to get the diagonal of accuracy, our little table here. And we're going to divide it by the sum or all the, all the total rows that are in the accuracy table. So when we do all of this, we get our answer of six, uh, 0 .0 0 0.607. So in other words, this model is about 61% accurate. Whether this is good or bad depends on the situation. But our purposes here was just to be able to develop a model from start to finish. And so again, you know, if you remember the results from the last example, you remember that we got accuracy of 62, 59, 55. So our accuracy is very similar to what we got with our training data. And also you have to keep in mind that again, if you look at the, our accuracy here, so you can see we got 61% this time, but with the training data, we got 62%. It is generally common for the model to do worse on the testing data than it does on the training data because again, your model has not learned any uh, has not learned the parameters from the testing data. However, in this particular situation, the numbers are very similar, indicating that our model would generalize well, even if it does not, even if it is not highly accurate. So I hope that this made sense for you and that you understand how to go from the training to the testing model and how to set up the different parts for the algorithm. If not, you know, take a second look at the videos and it, hopefully it'll make it work for you. So thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. Director of Educational Research Techniques, take care.